That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have breaking news. We have breaking news. And breaking news is that soccer does exist in America. It does exist. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the World Cup, which starts tomorrow. Month long event. It's going to depend on what Team USA does. I will watch a little bit because I don't really know nothing. I don't know anything about soccer, so I can't really give you an in depth commentary on what any player is going to do. And it hurts that America's. Um, uh, most well-known player, David Beckham, even though he was going to play for England, I believe, is out. Because we don't have nobody really player-wise to follow. It's really imperative for Team USA. In order, if soccer wants to, if soccer, if the sport of soccer wants to become as huge or at least somewhat at a respectable level, here in, in the States, you know, compared to what it is in the world, if it wants to at least get to a respectable level, it's all going to depend on what Team USA does. And especially that first game. First impressions are everything. They're everything. I think hockey, thanks to the Olympics, hockey is at a new level. You know, hockey hockey has recovered far beyond what they was going through in the last decade with the lockout. Um, changes were made, the rule changes and all that stuff. And Team USA, what a battle against Team Canada in the Olympic final. Yes, Team Canada won. They were supposed to win, really. But the performance of Team USA really gave an energizer to a sport in this country that, that needed it. That needed it. And you got that. So the same thing has, I think, is imperative. I don't know if USA is the favorite. They're probably not. But it is imperative for Team USA to have a strong performance in the World Cup as we move along. Because if Team USA is out early, tell me other than diehard soccer fans, and no offense, there ain't that many of them, who's gonna stick around and watch the rest of the World Cup if the US if Team USA doesn't do well? I know I won't. Now I just speak for myself, but you know I can get I can kinda figure out it's kind of, it's Common sense, really. Now back to college football. I just wanted to, I just wanted to kind of touch on that. I had to give a shout out to that. All right, Steve um, Strasburg. We're gonna get to him um, eventually on the show today. We're gonna get to him. Oh man, what a debut! I, I we'll we'll talk about him. I have a lot to say about that. But college football, we wait to see what the scene is. Now, if it's just Nebraska, no, Colorado is official. Nebraska is not, it's not official. If, but it's, it's very likely. If it's just Nebraska to the Big Ten and Colorado to the Pac-10, then not really... Nothing really was, really was done, because Nebraska had a so-so season in football, and Colorado had a so-so below under par season in football. So it's not going to really make much of a difference, which is why fans are probably hoping that more happens. Short term rise, this is great. All this attention on college football and college sports and 
all this attention going to that and all this teams moving and repositioning themselves. This is great short term. But the real focus here, ladies and gentlemen, is long term. It's long term. The real test, though, is the Big East in basketball. Has the Big East really gained anything from having 16 schools in their conference in basketball? I really don't think so. As a fan, I don't see it. But as a businessman, they gain more money by having more teams. As a business. And the, as a business and from television. The money comes, all this comes from television. If there was no TV, first off, there's no TV, there'll be no computer, there'll be no YouTube, there will be no me. Well, there'll be me, but you want to see me. But if there was no television stuff to worry about, none of this would be going on. None of these conference moves and stuff would take place. Heck, we, there'll be no such thing as a national championship game. No such thing. The team who's ranked number one by, it'll be the team who's ranked number one by coaches at the end of the season is a national champion. That's it. Next season. But it's so much more complex than that. I'll leave it at this because we don't really know what to expect. We don't know. We will see some teams who were dominant in a conference not become so dominant anymore because of more competition, because of more obstacles in the way. Me personally, I don't think it will happen this year. But I think within the next two or three years, the Big 12 is finished. I think it's finished. I don't think, I think Notre Dame, I got to look up how long Notre Dame's contract with NBC is. For the time being that they have their contract, the Big 10 always has an open invitation for Notre Dame. But as long, or any conference, but as long as Notre Dame has their football contract with NBC, which I believe is till 2015, as long as Dick Ebersaw keeps paying Notre Dame to broadcast their home games, there's no reason to join a conference. Because all your money is coming from NBC. Penn State wasn't getting that type of money when they was independents, so they joined the Big Ten. If Notre Dame was out of a TV deal, I bet everything that within a heartbeat, they will be with the conference. And more than likely with, a big, with the Big Ten. Guarantee you that. Now, coming up next, USC from earlier last decade, chalk. They're finished. Because of shame, because of of inexcusable behavior by a certain player who won the Heisman but was ineligible. You're gonna find out the true lesson of how one bad apple can spoil a bunch. I'm Anthony Alford. This is the Alf Dog Show.